Hi guys, Squirrel here. Today, I'm going to show you something different. This is not going to be a game or a simulator. This is going to be real life. I've taken my simulation into the real world, so to speak. And uh, some of you may be aware I've been learning to uh, fly. I've been taking my PPL, my private pilot's license. Recently, I've been sitting, studying hard and sitting for exams. And uh, I've also been flying circuit work. Now, back in January, I did my very first solo flight. And I have a picture here. If you follow my Instagram, you'll have already seen this. This is me just after I landed doing my very first solo flight and uh, I was presented with a certificate by my instructor uh, to celebrate the fact that I flew an aircraft on my own for the very first time. Now, of course, this is something that I've done in a simulator quite a lot, but in, in real life, it's quite different. Now, I fly a Robin HR200 aircraft, which is quite a nice little aircraft to fly and uh, high visibility. And what I did was I put a GoPro on the inside. I also attached a recorder so that you could hear me speak and get the comms and that kind of thing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk about the circuit work first. I'm just going to give you a brief overview so that you can uh, you can understand what's going on in the video. If you want to just skip ahead and just watch the actual footage, that's fine. Uh, but if you want to understand what I'm doing and where I'm flying from, then uh, stick around. So, I'm flying out of Earl's Cone, which is an airfield in England, funnily enough. And uh, it's down in towards Suffolk way. It's, in, it's still in Essex. Suffolk's just over here. Here's Earl's Cone. Just to give you a bearing on where we are, that is London Stansted. So it's, it's, it's east from Stansted. Now, Earl's Cone used to be, um, it used to be a World War II airfield. It was actually built by the uh, Americans back in 1943, and they flew B-17 bombers out of here. The RAF took over it. Uh, we had famous people here like Bob Hope and the Glenn Miller Orchestra. Uh, in 1946, after the war, this thing was put into care and maintenance. There used to be three runways here. This is the last remaining runway, and there used to be one here and one here. And this kind of triangle setup was quite common back in World War II because it land allowed aircraft to land on different run runways depending on the wind direction. Today, this is a golf and country club, industrial estate, and here's the airfield. If I flick it onto a satellite view, you'll get a better idea. There's the golf course right there. And this is the actual runway that we fly on. Now, normally this is a, a grass strip runway, uh, but it does have a, a tarmac runway for winter use. Now we're in winter and there's no hope of landing on the grass. So you'll see me using this tarmac runway, but it is quite narrow. Although that does kind of make you pretty accurate when it comes to takeoffs and landings. But if you're used to the normal width, width runway, this thing is pretty small. This is the, uh, the hangar down here. Uh, this is the uh, the flight shop. This is the aircraft and uh, a lot of the aircraft are either hangered in here or down there That is the Essex and Hearts Air Ambulance. They fly out of here as well So you sometimes get that taken off when you're flying now the, the runway is 06 going in this direction But the most common runway is runway 24 which comes in from this direction Now what we're doing today is we're gonna be flying some circuit work now circuit work if uh, if you know what it is That's great. If you don't let me briefly explain circuit work is where you take off and you effectively fly a box circuit around and land again. Now you can either touch and go or you can do a full stop landing depending on what you're trying to do. Now the whole point of circuit work is that it teaches you to take off and land in quick succession. You take off, you do a lap, you come back, you land, you take off, you go around, you come back and land. It's actually quite tiring. It's more tiring possibly than it sounds. It sounds fun, but it's actually quite tiring. There's a lot to do in the circuit. There's a lot of things you can learn, but it's fantastic for practicing how to take off and land the aircraft that you're flying. Now, the wind today was was pretty nasty. It was a very nasty wind. It was it kept changing. It kept being gusting. Uh, it was it would elevate you and drop you very quickly. And you'll see that in the footage. You'll see sometimes it's pretty challenging, uh, particularly on the approach coming in onto a final. It was very challenging. And uh, you'll see my my very first landing is a, is a bit of a almost did a go around. Let me put it that way. But after that, it gets a lot better. Anyway, let's talk about the circuit. So a basic circuit is is a box. It's it's a box that you can either do what's called a left-hand circuit or a right-hand circuit. Now at Earl's Cone, we always fly on the south side of the runway in a circuit. We never fly on the northern side. That's the dead side. And the reason is mostly because of Earl's Cone Town and noise abatement reasons. What happens is you take off and like this and you'll climb and you'll then make a left turn like this and you essentially are drawing a box like that. That is the general circuit like this. And you land. So you take off this way, do a left-hand circuit because you keep turning left and you land like that. 
When the wind changes around and we fly 06, we would take off and do a right hand circuit. So we're always flying the south side of the runway. That is what's called the dead side. That's where you descend when you're, uh, when you're coming into land from when you've been flying away. Now, the important thing is that um, the circuit, generally speaking, you'll make this turn at around 45 degrees from the end of that runway and the same thing here. It's about 45 degrees from the edge of the runway. We have a nice little landmark here, which you hopefully will see in the video. This is like a group of farming sheds. There's some noise abatement around this area here, so we cannot overfly this. There's also some noise abatement around these areas here, so we can't overfly them. So a little bit constrained. But just to give you some kind of idea about what we do and uh, the names that you'll, you'll hear me talk about this in the actual video. But when you take off and you make your first left turn, you're, you're generally turning at around 700 feet so that you'll, you'll take up to what's called pattern altitude. Now pattern altitude for us uh, is quite a common altitude. It's 1000 feet AGL. AGL means above ground level. So it's a thousand feet above the, the actual airfield. And when we're on this leg here, which is known as the downwind leg, sorry, this, this is known as the crosswind leg, this is where we want to be hitting a thousand feet around about here now the wind today like i say is coming in roughly this direction but it also comes in that and sometimes in that it's, it keeps changing around and what it does is it tends to push you towards this um, noise abatement area so generally speaking i have to set a heading something like this so that my track stays on course because i will get pushed across that way by the wind and you'll see me do that so by the crosswind leg i should be making my left turn Roughly where this little white house is, you probably won't see it, but I can see it off my left wing. And I'll be at 1,000 feet as I turn onto my downwind leg. This is the downwind leg, so-called because you're flying with the wind. So you pick up a tailwind at this point and it will it will accelerate you uh, towards your, um, your left turn here. You'll hear me go through a lot of checks. There's a lot of checks that you have to do here. For, it's the basically the approach checks where you're going through, making sure everything's fine. Uh, there's a carburetor on the... Robin, so you have to do carb heat checks as well. You'll hear me go through all of that. And this is where you'll make your downwind check, uh, your downwind call. When you get down to this point, the sheds here, this is where you'll be about 45 degrees off the, um, the, the runway tip. And you make your left turn, you start to decelerate, you engage your first step of flaps, and this is called the base leg. This is where we set up the aircraft for landing. So by the time we get to the end of the base leg here, we want to be around about 500 feet. The final speed for landing the Robin is around about 70 knots. However, in these kind of conditions where the wind picks up and blusts around, you're generally aiming for at least 75, sometimes even knocking on 80 knots to land. Because what can happen is, as you come in to land here, the wind can suddenly drop and you'll lose a lot of airspeed. And if you're flying too close to that 70 limit, it can almost put you in the stall. So uh, you want to be flying a little bit quickly as you come in. Uh, so that you, you can you can always take that speed away but it's very hard to get it back when you're on your final but so this is base and then this is final so just before you make your final you'll look out over here make sure there's nobody else coming in here and uh, make your left turn call final and in you go that is the circuit detail it's very important here's a, here's a little um diagram that i'll show you which will uh, just show you exactly what i just showed you here is the upwind leg the crosswind leg the downwind leg the base leg and final. you'll hear me use these terms uh, as I'm flying around the circuit. But without further ado, I shall put you into the video and you can see what happens. I'll talk, I talk all the way through the video. This is as I flew, I talk through it, uh, explain the whole thing. And uh, I hope you enjoy. If you want to see some more of this kind of stuff, please let me know. My idea is when I get my PPL, I'll go out flying in real life and show you flights um, that I record. I'll, I'll have more cameras at that point. Um, so I'll be able to show you different kind of views. Hope you enjoy. Right. Let's go. A clear left side. Okay, we are using runway 24 today. And although it's a nice day, it's very blustery. Got one up ahead, he might be doing his power checks right now. Uh, just been doing it the circuit. My instructor just got out. We're about to taxi down to 24, we'll have to wait for him to leave. And we'll have to do our pre-takeoff checks. So, this is 2-4 coming this way. Those edges there cause 
A lot of interesting wind when you're about to touch down. Wind comes over the top, however the wind's going that way this today. It's like 180190. Yeah, he's doing his power checks, so we have to wait for him to uh, do his thing. Hey. Power checks something to do because we've all been flying. Number set to take off. Car beat is cold, fuel pumps on. Battery master alternator are on. Flaps. 10 degrees, visually checked. Mixture is rich. Magnets are set to both. Probes are on, pizza heat is on. Lamp lights not required. Attitude indicators might be sloping, but otherwise fine. We've got a compass heading of 6-0. Altimeter is set to 992 UFE. Uh, Radio Nav Aid is on standby. Transponder is going to altitude now. 2245. Checked. Patch secure, harness secure my side. Flight control check. It's good. Just in time for him to start moving. Hey, let's do a quick briefing while we're uh, waiting for him to get moving. <coughs> so, we're on 24 and a left hand circuit. Which means. Take off on 2-4. Yeah, indicating 2-0-0-B's, 1-2-0. 2-0-0-0-0. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Slight crosswind. Uh, so we take off at 2-4. At 300 feet, flaps come up. Uh, we climb to 700 feet. Start making a right one left turn. Uh, we've then got to avoid some houses. Noise abatement procedures. And we then go on to our crosswind leg. Taking off now. Uh, we then go downwind, calling for downwind. Do our, our checks. We go downwind, and then we're looking for like four sheds. You'll see them, like four farmer sheds. That's our visual cue to turn onto uh, base. At which point we need to descend down to about 500 before we turn onto final. Uh, but we're going to keep a bit of extra speed. Normally we're coming at 70. Today we're going to be aiming for more 75, possibly even 80, uh, because the wind. Um, the wind keeps slacking and it will drop you out of the sky quite quickly if you're not careful. I'm gonna get visual on that guy, there he is. And he's climbing. Right, let's put in our call. Student golf up for golf, ready for departure. Student golf up for golf, Roger Simpson indicating 200 degrees, 10 knots. Student golf up for golf. Hey, coach, clear. Quick check of the windsock. Even though, even though we were advised 2-0, it's, uh, it's already 2-6, so it's, it's quite variable. Okay, lined up. Full power. We're aiming for three touch and goes and a full stop today. Hold the centre line, there's speed's building. There's 55, he's back on the stick. 60, climbing out of 70, up like a rocket, because it's only me flying. Let's start to trim, hold 24, 70 knot climb. 24, 70 knots. And visual on the other aircraft. Uh, it looks like he's up in the pan. I don't know if he, I didn't hear the call whether he's flying out or not. There's 300 feet, flat's coming up now. I think he's leaving the pan by the look of it. 700 begin our turn. 700 came very, very quickly. Yeah, he's flying south. Don't have visual on him. That's a thousand feet, so we'll uh, level out. Power, power down. Make a slow turn. The wind's pushing us this way. Just trying to push us into the noise of the noise of the basement problem. So I'm just holding a. Kilo, peering away to the south, changing to the south end on 3075. There he goes. 
Confirm. Can I rotate the Delta 130 to set the fire? I've just lost visual on him. He's going to those plans, but he's flying to south end, so that's fine. Don't need to worry about him. Right. Plant mark is down here. There's a little house. We're holding for miles in here. Just reach for him slightly. You can see the pick we get then. Plant mark, get ready for a turn onto uh, downwind. There we go. Easy round. And put an our call to our checks. Let's see if we go for the golf now, boy. Didn't go for the golf now, boy. Okay, we're a bit high. Well, it's just a crack now. Okay. Car beats to hot. Brakes. No undercarriage. Mixture. Fuel pump is on. Quants are sufficient for a go around. P's and P's are all in the green. Sections in the green. EI is indicated 6-0, which is correct according to the compass. 992 is set. Heartbeat back to hot. Match secure. Honest is secure on my side. Level out at 1000. And there were some sheds, I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're our visual cue. And we're going for a touch and go. Quick scan of the horizon. Looks pretty clear at the moment. 1000 feet. Touch and go turn. Off the base. So we're going to throttle back now. One stage of flap. And turn. Now, those houses on the right, can't fly those. Aim for the church, if I can see it. There's 330 heading. And go down to full flaps. Now we're looking for about 500 on our base turn. But if it's slightly high, it's better than slightly low in this wind. Quick scan of the approach, approach looks clear. We're aiming to keep our speed above 70. Approach is clear again, quick check. 75 knots as we make our turn. 600 feet, so that's good. Slightly high is what I want it to be. And put in our call. Golf, 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 final two four. Golf, 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 but we will lose altitude quite quickly in this wind. Holding at 80, not going to let the speed reduce. A okay, full throttle back now. And let's hold it, hold it, hold it. And a little bit rough. Full throttle. And up she comes. Flaps one stage up. Okay, so I held it up too long. It was touch and go or whether I was. It was debatable as to whether I was going to uh, just pull power back and get out of that because I literally did the uh, the old pull up and. Flaps up, so that was a bit of a rough one, not happy about that. But it is fairly challenging conditions today. Uh, when I was flying with my instructor, we we had uh, a few good ones, but also a few challenging ones. The wind is very, very variable at the moment. 2470, we're up to 600 here, I'm just checking my uh, noise abatement to my left. Start our rate one turn, hold the climb. I'm going to aim to do a much better landing this time because I'm not happy about that one. I uh, overcompensated, is what I did. Pulled back too much and that left us in, on the uh, on the bump. We were in danger of stalling at that point. Why I almost pushed the throttle and went. But it felt like it, the aircraft was still gliding so I kept it. Okay, there's a thousand, 2500 RPM quick scan. 
Down on the left is our visual turn. Little house down here. He doesn't mind his overflying him. Big house, he's got his old tennis court. Hey. Time to put in our call. Feel the wind kicking us around. Okay, car beat. Bikes, mixture, fuel pumps on, quantity sufficient for a go around. Temperatures and pressures are on the green, the suction's all on the green. Uh, compass heading is slightly off. Altitude's holding at a thousand. But that compass heading settle down. It's starting to settle down now. RP back to hot. On a secure hatch secure. There are some sections of the aerodrome that are really blustery and particularly on the approach we're getting a lot of lateral kick. And then there are other sections like this where it's nice and calm. Very strange day. Okay, we are over our turn point. Throttle back. On the stage of flap. And we'll let some of the speed bleed on. Church again, 3-3. Three, three. Go to four flaps and then we'll get our trip set up. Have a trip for 75. There we go. 75. Approach check is clear. Uh, a little bit low, so I'm just going to punch in a bit more throttle. Remember, we use pitch to control the speed, we use throttle to control the altitude. Counterintuitive initially, but you get used to it. So we want our trim to be set like that for 70, 75, and we're going to control our altitude with the throttle. Maintain the speed at all times on the approach. Student Golf Papa Golf, final 2-4. Student Golf Papa Golf, Roger, Sussman indicating 200 degrees, 120 knots. Student Golf Papa Golf. Okay, we're not getting as much lateral kick this time, the wind's settled down a little bit. So we're holding at 70. A little bit of throttle just to reduce the altitude slightly. Now we're getting a bit of kick. This approach looks a lot better than the last one. Not as blustery. Throttle back, continue the glide, and it again. And touchdown. Okay, full throttle. It was a good touchdown that one. Air speed is building, there's 60, pull back, raise the flap one notch. That was a good touchdown. I did overcompensate again. But it was a good solid touchdown. Very smooth. 2-4 heading. Picture for 7-0 climb. Get kicked all over the place as we come out of that. The airfield's surrounded by rows of hedges, and the hedges create a lot of turbulence as the wind goes over it. And today the wind's coming at us, going over the hedges. And thus as you climb out, you get kicked around quite a bit. Before heading, quick scan of the horizon. I don't see anything else. Approaching, nothing on the radio. Uh, laps are up, 700, begin our turn. The so hotel to the left here, they don't like being overflown. I'll get on the phone if we do. Hey. Keep it pointed, 170, and there's a thousand. So pitch, attitude, rim, and there's a thousand, quick scan of horizon, look for our turning point, take a bit of throttle out there, engine's over revving a little bit, and we begin our turn over our bump mark, onto our downwind leg. We're a little bit high again, we'll lose some altitude here. Student Golf Papa Golf now, please. 
over 1100 feet, so it's slightly high. That'll be back to hot. Catch your harnesses are secure. This time, we're going to pull stop. Okay, there's a thousand feet. Not often. This will drift as you're doing all your checks, but not if you break it back. Okay. Hey, okay, power it down. 10 degrees of flaps. Bring our tail to base. There's three, three. And four flaps coming out, and then assess, constantly assessing and retrimming. Making sure that everything's going as it should be. On the base like this is where we get set up the final, so we want to be trimmed nicely for 75 at this point. But if I let go of the stick like that, is it trimmed for 75? If it's not, we need to adjust. Okay, make our turn to final now. And then put in the call. Altitude's good, this is where we get kicked around again. Good golf up the golf, final two four. Soon golf up the golf, just indicating two three zero degrees, one zero knots. Good golf up the golf. Two three zero is almost a direct headwind. Okay, we're trimmed for seventy five, pushing on eighty, and just going to put in a bit of throttle to make sure we clear those hedges. But you know, if you see your speed changing, you must not pitch up or down. If we trim for 75, throttle is what is going to control the altitude here. So, as I come over those hedges, we're at 75, it's exactly where we need to be. Then, this is where the turbulence is going to kick in, if any, and then we throttle back. And then we're just going to let it glide down, glide down, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, and we are down. Hold it off, let the speed go. Once the airspeed drops, the airplane will do, will bring itself down because it simply cannot fly. How you do? Hey, throttle back now so that we uh, lose some speed on our way down. Yeah, so the last couple of them were pretty good. First two were a bit, uh, a bit iffy. First one I wasn't happy about at all, I was almost go around material. It's an Essex and Hart Air Ambulance right there, prepping the aircraft for uh, journey. Hey, okay. get over the holding point, put in our call. Okay, brakes are coming on. So now vacate runway call. Golf, Golf, Roger, I understand you need fuel, so if you could pop it onto Foxtrot 1, that'd be, that'd be great, thanks. Foxtrot 1, you can Golf, Papa Golf. Right, needs refueling, so yeah. Uh, car beat is cold, flaps are coming up, fuel pump's going off, landing light's coming off, pito heat's coming off, transponder to standby. And closing down checks we'll have to do when we get over there, we need to find Foxtrot 1 now. So, quick check, nobody's around, no aircraft moving. Magneto's check for con. 
100 drop. There's a 100 drop. And Mitch Dulene. Kill the engine. Magnets is off. It's removed. All the lights are off. And this is where we want to switch this off. We will use comms, so I hope you enjoyed the flight.